Omicron appendages. Prawn, the body is divided into head, thorax and abdomen. And there are 19 segments. These 19 segments are evident from the appendages that are present on its ventral side. 19 pairs of appendages are present in prawn pineus. 5 pairs in cephalic region, 8 pairs in thoracic region and 6 pairs in abdominal region. Each appendage remains attached to the sternum of the exoskeleton. Sternum is the region on the ventral side and on the ventral side you find the appendage attached to the sternum. The appendages of the successive segments closely correspond in structure and development. The appendages of prone are biramous that is each of them has two processes or rami arising basal portion called protopodite. These are segmented. The two processes are outer exopodite and inner endopodite. The segments and their segments are called podomeres. Protopodite that is typically two segmented one and its segments are called coxa and basis. Coxa by which the appendage is attached to the body and basis that is present on the terminal. Coxa remain attached to the body wall. Bases bear exopodite as well as endopodite. Exopodite is unsegmented in all appendages. But are endopodites that is segmented in some appendages and unsegmented in some other based on its function. By pairs of cephalic appendages, the antinule, the first one, the antinae, the mandible or the chewing which is used for chewing purpose. The first maxillae and the second maxillae, these five appendages together form what is known as cephalic appendages. There are five pair in numbers. These include paired antinules, paired antinae, paired mandibles, the first maxillae as well as the second. In this mandible and first maxillae are uniramus and others are biramus. Biramus means they bear both exopodite as well as endopodite. Antinules and antinae are tactile structures whereas mandible are masticatory structure used for cutting the food into pieces. And first and second maxillae they serve for feeding purposes or they perform the function of jaws. Cephalothoracic appendages these are 13 pairs First five pairs are called cephalic appendages, the cephalothoracic region that is fused together and covered by means of a carapace. So within the cephalothoracic appendages comes the cephalic appendages which are five pairs and the next eight pairs form the thoracic appendages. The first appendage or the first uh, cephalic appendage is what is known as antinule. So this is the structure of antinule. The protopodite it is three segmented usually it is two segmented in all the uh, appendage um, segments of the body but here it is three segmented appendage where in addition to this coxa and basis you have a basal precoxa and in the precoxa you have an opening for statocyst and this statocyst which maintains equilibrium of prawn is present in this procoxal region. On the basis you have two long process and these are many segmented whip like feelers which are tactile sense organs. They are not homologous to exopodite and endopodite the biramus appendages that you will be learning in other appendages. The outer feel is further divided into an inner small branch and an outer larger branch. Antenna. After antinule comes a pair of antenna. The protopodite shows coxa as well as basis. And on this basis you have endopodite as well as exopodite. 
the endopodite it is a long feeler like structure which is tactile sense organ the exopodite it is plate like and it is called squama squama is the squama is the exopodite that is present s q u a m e it works as balancer during swimming at the base of the coxa renal opening is present which is known as green gland or antenary gland antennae is sensory excretory and the balancing organ of prawn mandibles they are present on either side of the mouth the basal part of the coxa is divided into two parts it shows a mandibular and incisor process it is uh, calcified one and the mandibular process shows five or six dental plates the incisor process shows three teeth on the outer margin of the head a mandibular palp is present which represents the basis and endopodite the exopodite is absent the mandibles are mastigatory in the first maxilla is also known as maxilla which is the fourth cephalic appendage and it is the smallest of all appendages they are thin leaf like and uniramous each of them consists of bilobed protopodite a bilobed protopodite and an unsegmented flat and leaf like endopodite exopodite is absent in first maxillae protopodite it has flat and lobular coxa and bases its lobular and fleshy first maxillae of two sides project inward and act together as jaws hence they are called natto bases they are used for pushing the food into second maxillae second maxillae are the last pair of appendages they are thin leaf like biramus each of them has three parts protopodite exopodite and endopodite protopod is four lobed structure formed of a bilobed coxa and a bilobed basis exopodite and endopodite are flat and unsegmented they are flat leaf like structure with this uh, cephalic appendages are over now we move on to thoracic appendages there are eight pairs the first three pairs are maxillipeds and the remaining five pairs together form the walking legs so this three pairs that's a maxillipede first maxillipede second maxillipede and third maxillipede and the rest that forms the walking legs the first maxillipede they are thin and leaf like protopodite is two segmented the endopodite is short exopodite exopodite is present it is bilobed structure and an epipodite which is respiratory in function is also present an epipodite which is respiratory in function is also present on the outer side of coxa second maxillipede is less foliaceous than the first its protopodite consists as usual of coxa and bases the coxa is short and covered with setae on its inner margin it carries a small epipodite and a gill on its outer margin this y shaped structure is what is called epipodite the basis is immovably articulated to the endopodite that is present and the exopodite is long slender unjointed and whip like whereas the endopodite is divided the endopodite is divided into five segments which is called ischium meerus carpus propodus and dactylus from basis region touching the basis region you have ischium meerus carpus 
propodus as well as the dactylus at this anterior tip. The propodus and the dactylus are bent and turned backwards forming a plate. The third maxillipid is pediform or leg-like in appearance. Its protopodoid consists of coxa and bases. The coxa carries a thin epipodite on its outer side. There is a slender, unjointed exo exopodite attached to the outer side of the bases and bearing stiff setae. The endopodite, that is three-jointed, ischium being fused with merus and propodus with dactylus, while the carpus remains free, forming the middle segment of the end and propodus with the dactylus. The dactylus while the remaining free forming the middle segment of the end. Prawn is decapod. Deca is a decapodin. Deca means 10. Pod means uh, legs. So it has 10 walking legs or it has 5 pairs of walking legs which is part of this thoracic leg. Even walking leg consists of seven cylindrical segments joined end to end. The first two segments, the coxa and the bases, and then you have the endopodite, which is divided into five segments. These seven segments together form the walking leg. The first five segments of the endopodite are ischium, merus, carpus, propodus, and dactylus. And the last one in the first uh, three walking pairs of uh, in the first uh, two pairs you have <clears throat> the first two pairs of walking legs you have the chelate legs where the dactylus and propodus they are modified to form like a pincer the first and second walking legs carry pincers at the proximal end hence they are known as chelate legs they catch the foot and push it into the mouth the second chelate leg in male is larger and powerful than in non-chelate. They are useful for walking. Here the tip is pointed. Uh, the protopodite has two segments, cox and bases. The endopodite has ischium, merus, carpus, propodus and dactylus. The third, fourth and fifth walking legs are non-chelate legs. In female, the third walking leg bears a female reproductive opening on the inner side of coxa whereas the male uh, reproductive organ has its opening on the fifth walking. There are six pairs of abdominal appendages called pleopods or swimmerets which help the prawn in swimming. The last pair are specially called uropods because they form with the telson a powerful tail fin which is useful, used for leaping backward. Each pleopod is typical biramous type of appendage. Its protopodite consists of short proximal coxa and an elongated distal base. The basis carries a pair of leaf-like rami, the outer exopodite and an inner endopodite. Both the rami are covered with tactile setae. The endopodite is smaller than the exopodite when it comes to abdominal appendages. And in male, the first pair that is modified into a structure. The endopodites are fused together to form a structure which is known as petasma. The endopodite, the endopodite of two um, appendages, they fuse together to form an append uh, structure which is known as Petasma. Each of the second, third, fourth, and fifth pleopod bears on the inner side of the endopodite a hook like rod called appendix interna. They, these appendices interna of the two sides interlock with one another during the breeding season, thereby forming an efficient basket for carrying eggs. The second pleopod in male bears another additional rod like process called appendix masculina. The uropod, it has a protopodite of only one segment. The rami are oval and fan-like. Exopodite is divided by a fine suture and bears a spine near its base. 
but the endopodite is undivided both the rami are covered with setae along the margins